I really love this jingle. Oh How yeah, you could always dance like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so welcome yeah. to see the Ramadan stories. This is the signature <laughs> segment of the Three Hour News Show on today, and some influencers are using their power for a positive difference. For example, model Laura Mulyadi has created a foundation called Gerakan Matahari dari Timur. Yes, indeed. Gerakan Matahari dari Timur is a movement that aims to preserve Indonesian fabrics while empowering women and children to follow the times. The movement's objectives is to preserve Indonesian culture for all generations, including Gen Z who may have started to leave the Indonesian culture behind. Oh, so this is a big concern then. This is a big concern yeah. indeed, yeah. But, um, you know, from a marketing perspective, I'm not really worried actually mm. that Gen Z, um, you know, they will eventually get back to Indonesian culture mm. roots. Mm. But in terms of marketing point of view, they actually don't have money. Oh, they don't have money? They don't have oh, money. That's a big right? problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But so, what, what, makes, uh, what makes Indonesia can revive its culture is actually Gen Z plus the ex elder generation, ge elder generation right. the millennials. So right? they, they are the ones who have the power to purchase, right? Oh, yeah. Well, Gen Z can so learn. So the dads and the moms and the aunties and the uncles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So let's find out more about this initiative. We now have the founder of Gerakan Matahari dari Timur, Laura Mujadi. Very beautiful indeed. Hi, Laura, everybody. thank you so much for joining. Thank you for inviting me. I'm yeah. so happy to be it's here. It's a pleasure. We covered pleasure your event well. a couple of weeks ago, I think. Yes. And now yes. you're thank here you. talking, about us, uh, talking with us about Gerakan Matahari Dari Timur. And in sure, he's here you. now with us. So maybe you could start uh, by elaborating what is Gerakan Matahari Dari Timur and why did you uh, start this movement? So uh, Gerakan Matahari Dari Timur is actually a movement. Mm to preserve Indonesian fabrics, cultural heritage, empowering women and children by adapting to the growth of our era. Uh, the story why I initiated this, actually, in the past I've worked um, on several projects concerning children, women, culture, education, and um, in a discussion came up a very um, important issue right. that our motives in Indonesia in some areas uh, they're about to extinct and some of them are already in extinction. So motives like for example Ulos motif? Uh, no. Fabrics from Indonesia or? At that time it was from Lombok. Ah, so, Lombok. Yes and um, so I went home and I thought about it I did some research mm. and if these motives are extinct it's not going to affect only the fabrics itself, but it's going to affect all of us mm. yeah. in a way that um, the story behind it, mm. the culture behind it, the prayers that are hidden in these motifs. Yeah. And we grew up with that, right? Yeah. It became the collective DNA of ourselves. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it saddens me if we don't do anything about it, then our children, our grandchildren will not be able to enjoy it, will not be able to know about it. I mean, uh, the fabric itself is a story, right? Exactly. It's a story in history. Yeah. Exactly. And each motif has its own philosophical meaning, right? Exactly. It's not only in, um, you know, eastern part of Indonesia, but also, for example, in Java, yeah. each fabric has its uh, meaning. Yep. Whether um, it tells about Kraton or the uh, traditional mm -hmm. palace of Java or other things, but in eastern Indonesia as well, it shows how people lived back True. then and how civilization, mm. civilization grew. So um, if you may elaborate more, what are the programs that um, your movement is all about? Is it, um, you know, trying to preserve by inviting people to enjoy an exhibition kind of um, event or is there anything else that you do? Uh, we do both online and offline programs, events, workshops, uh, and we targeted uh, to specific audiences. Mm. So, for example, um, you guys also reported uh, yes, the one we had, Cinta Aku Indonesia. Yeah, yeah. That one, yes, true. Uh, involved approximately 500 youngsters from Sabang to Marauke, oh. both in participating and also creating the event. Right. Um, and then there's another one online, for example, for Hari Ibu Nasional. Mm. We involve 100 Indonesian women from different backgrounds, different kind of ages, different profession, mm -hmm. 
to be proud to tell who they are, right. what they do, and to support other women in what they do. Mm. And then we, uh, for last year, um, we had the men actually didn't mm. uh, to celebrate and to appreciate what uh, women in their lives uh, do mm. and how they impact the right. women. This is so. this is actually what I was referring when I said that. Gen X mm. is more able in terms of financially because mm. we have to admit that traditional clothes or traditional woven of Indonesia is expensive. That's it is awesome. not at the price of you know everyday yeah. budget, for That's example, hundred thousand or two hundred thousand. Mm. That Gen Z mm. is quite difficult to afford. But the question is, how is your movement makes it affordable for Gen Z? Because we need continuation, we need regeneration, right? Not only ibu ibu. Not only or millennials but or baba baba. Ba, ba. It's an investment, basically. Exactly, right? it's an investment, true. But yeah. how can you mainstream mm. the expensive traditional fabric so that Gen Z can afford it? Um, okay, as you said, they're expensive, yeah. but it depends on the way you see it. Mm. It's there is a slow fashion mm. that ah. you call. With this kind of cloth, sometimes it can be called a super slow fashion. Mm. These are made by women. Mm. And it's not just a cloth. In my eyes, it's not just a piece of fashion or a cloth that you use because you want to use it. It's a piece of art and there is a story and there is uh, many other things behind it. For example, the sacrifice that these women, most of them are women. Who yeah. Are doing this. Yes, mm. they have to sacrifice their time, finding their time in their daily lives yeah, and most yeah. of them with their limitation, no electricity for example. Mm. They only work, they only can work when the sun is there. Mm. So uh, when it rains, they cannot mm. wave. Right, right. So there are challenges that, um, that they face themselves there. Mm. So when you ask me, how do we actually uh, make the youngsters or people with a limited budget can afford it's how you see it so it's not something that you buy and then you cut or you just mm. you know make it into you, a you dress wear it for like, a month and then yes no that's it no it's a piece of art you're buying something more than mm. just a cloth you're buying the love you're buying the process exactly Sorry and Within them, there are uh, other areas they're actually making a more affordable one using the motifs. Right. So, and now there are a lot of designers and brands also incorporated this um, kain. Mm. Probably, for example, some of them are using the leftovers uh, kain ah. and apply them in their design. Yeah. And um, mm. it's kind of hip and trendy. So yeah. the youngster can actually use that. But my opinion, don't only use that or buy them because it's hip or trendy. That's true. Yeah, but you, you have need to, to know see why. the real yeah. meaning behind yeah. it, right? Yeah. Maybe Gen Z can start with that, um, you know, a leftover fabric first because yes. they are made gorgeous, right? Yeah. These yes. leftover gorgeous, kind percha, they are made mm. gorgeous. Mm. Um, they can start from there and once your financial ability is increasing, then you yeah. can invest in the real um, this state of art. Yeah, and one more thing, I'm, I'm sorry, it's just sometimes uh, a lot of people forget or maybe they don't know this kind, in order to make it, it's... It takes a long time. Yes, yeah. and yeah. it's it's a skill, it's love, it's a passion that are passed down from generation to generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for example, doing this project, I uh, obtained one kind uh, from uh, the people in Lombok mm. and that kind touched me so much the story of it that I will pass it down to my daughter mm. so um, it's something that also a value tangible and intangible mm. so maybe people uh, sometimes forget that you know you leave uh, stocks for your children yeah. you leave yeah. you know uh, savings but this is also something that you can leave to your children yeah. Right. Yeah. so yeah. remember that do not only buy something or fashion items that you know that is in the hit in the hip today or in the fashion today but it is more like a long-term thing yeah so you mentioned about empowering women and empowering children as well at the same time you want to preserve the these fabrics from extinction right so how do you combine these two um they're intertwined in my point of view to begin with Mm. Because um, 
100 years ago when it all started. It's very hard to detect uh, the when, but women started this. Mm. Right. So, uh, and until today, in a lot of uh, places in Indonesia, women do mm. and make the cloth. Right. Either uh, batik or uh, the woven. Uh, and uh, Bali, for example. Yes. Think, yeah. Most of them are women. Okay. Yeah. More Now, there are men who actually do them, yeah. but started with women. Years ago, men were sleeping. Yeah. Years ago. <laughs> I was going to say, this is... Cool. Women, who, women who work, women who made this art, right? Yeah. Where were the men? I know, where were the men? I mean, this is quite uh, exclusive, I would say, to women. But um, would you also see it as, I mean, men can also do that in the future, why not? Of course, and they're doing it now. Hmm. Uh, but um, one point uh, that I personally intrigued when I uh, did more research on this is that, that you know, in our culture, cloth, fabric, was used as a sign of uh, peace. Oh. Mm. Many of us didn't know about that. I didn't know about that. So women would actually make a kain and help the men who were in war mm. and to give the kain to men to oh. help to make two uh, places. So get it's a brokering. A, a, a sort piece, of like yeah, a peace offering. Hmm. So there are a lot of stories, a wow. lot of prayers, a lot of love hmm. that is put into this uh, kind. And if there is no demand, yeah. if less and less people are buying it because they don't know about it, they don't love it, so they don't act on it, mm -hmm. we're not gonna only you lose the motives. We're gonna lose all these beautiful things behind it. Right, right, right. So, wow, your story is so inspiring, but I believe there are many challenges that you face, right? Let alone we're talking about Eastern part of Indonesia. Mm. In terms of infrastructure, there's still a lot needs to be done. Mm. Uh, what are the challenges that you that you face in you making your movement a success? Um, of course, there are some challenges, both uh, internally and externally. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a movement and uh, there are some men who supported us, but mostly uh, my team are women mm. uh, with their own um, activities, mm. with their own lives. So to actually find a time to be together and to do something it, so that's at the beginning. That's <laughs> that's <laughs> <a challenge. laughs> you guys are all busy. Yeah, <laughs> it was already a challenge. <laughs> but when we came back to why we wanted to do this yeah, yeah. and compared to what these women do in their lives there it's no electricity yeah. then and, uh, rain mm. and all these things then it motivated us to keep going mm -hmm. um, and what we do it's okay that is internally externally i guess um mengenalkan to introduce because our tagline is mengenal mencinta melangka uh, that is Gerakan Matahari dari Timur. To know, to love, then to take a step. Mm. The step, it depends on what you can do, mm. depends on uh, what your passion is mm. and uh, your talent. So, so yeah. Right. So, if you, you can mention who are, you know, people behind this movement, Laura Mulyadi, okay, and who are, who are the others? There is uh, Karina Leonardi who trusted me from the beginning. He is our uh, art director. Okay. He supported uh, this movement from the beginning. I learned a lot from him. We learned a lot from him. Right. And there is also Aura Chandra as our advisor. And, uh, are these people models like you or they are from uh, no, no, a uh, walk of life? No, actually at the beginning, um, not a lot of models. Mm. Uh, Rinaldi Yunardi, oh, he is uh, uh, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, uh, a maestro, designer, yeah, uh, a maestro in uh, fashion art uh, design, mm -hmm. and then Aura Chandra is uh, mostly on movies and production. Okay. Uh, but uh, that is what we know. Oh. But what we don't know, and I learned about them, is just they have so much love and respect about art, culture, and then uh, in their personal lives, they do things to help 
yeah. uh, without the public know. So I, yeah. when I came up uh, with this uh, movement mm. and I knocked their door and said, can you help me and guide me? How do I uh, start? Mm. They said, okay, Lau, you need to do this, this, and you need to focus and uh, we need to find yeah. the relevance yeah. to the people that we target. Yeah, I mean, as, as uh, you have experiences in doing modeling and all that and get probably exposures on these uh, fabrics, right? And knowing all the stories behind that as well, doing some investigations as well. But how do we actually create awareness um, for, for the young generations, for the children, for example, so that they still love and that they want to preserve these fabrics? Start small. Mm. Uh, I always say, start small, but start. At uh, least start, make yes. a small step, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, start from yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, know something about it. Mm. Uh, like, for example, what am I wearing? Mm. If you get something, probably uh, most of the time, you get a piece of cloth for uh, graduation yeah. or weddings. Big oh, events. they're beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Start small by, what am I wearing? Mm. Why? Yeah, do yeah. I need to wear oh, this? Why? You That's not why. Yeah. Exactly. There's a cause behind. Yeah. It. And I think it's like, it's about not limiting ourselves because we see that traditional fabric is for only um, you know attending wedding. Yeah. Yes. Only for formal occasions, yeah. but actually we can break it down and make it more you know casual and every yeah, day for our to daily. day. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like from the from who you love first, mm. because this is a creation of love. So start. From, for example, I start from my family, mm. introduce it to my husband, my family, my children, uh, in the capacity that they can understand and they, I think that there is a relevance to them. Mm. Also to my friends, I see, okay, some of my friends didn't have any uh, fabrics before, Indonesian fabrics. Mm. They only had one <laughs> passed down because of uh, the wedding. Right. Um, mm. okay. And in their mind, yeah, I had to use this, right? I had to, yeah, because I yeah. want to. Yeah. Right? So, and it's normal. It's not something that, uh, unfortunately, it's not something that is uh, considered a big deal here. Mm. But uh, when I introduced to them, I told them their stories. You know, we watch movies together about this. We read uh, books about this. Then they said, you know what? I love cooking. I actually can use this kind of cloth. Mm. That uh, that is okay to use for tablecloth, for example, oh, right, right. and to entertain the people that I love. Mm. Okay. And from that, the conversation can start. One person can actually pass on some. Exactly. Oh. Now, this is a, a, an idea for you, Rory, with your sleep project. <coughs> You can, Sorry. you know, have more uh, motives exactly. your bedding. Well, product. nowadays I only use mm. batik from yeah. Solo yeah. because, um, you know, I have a business uh, with fabric and it uses uh, batik as well as part of the um, bed cover and bed sheet mm -hmm. um, kind of thing. But I think, yeah, um, Eastern Indonesian yeah. uh, motives are very rich. Exotic yes. as well. Exotic as well, yeah. And not only that. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. All right, you yeah. have to continue later. We have to take <laughs> okay. a break first, yeah. Yes, but, exactly. but, you know, sometimes I feel very sad when, um, you know, some designers or some people use Eastern Indonesian part mm. and then instead of um, empowering the, um, you know, producers there, mm they create their own stamp and make it as a print ah, version yeah. using using the motif from eastern part of indonesia right, it's I, I, quite saddening for me exactly. because it's kind of like stealing the idea but then you make it more affordable make it more cheaper i'm going to ask you what do you think about this right the trend of um, designers creating the same motif but with stamp their happening. own stamp yeah right so we're going to be talking about that um, after the break we're going to continue after this don't go anywhere